You know sometimes when you fuck something up, and on reflection, it's clear that it was generally just a bad idea to begin with, but you're too proud and too committed to give up on it, so you keep forging doggedly ahead, determined to silence your own doubts and somehow make a go of things. But then everything you do somehow makes it worse. Every decision sees you lurching from one failure to another, until eventually you wish you'd just never bothered in the first place. Well, that's pretty much how Amazon must be feeling about Rings of Power right around now. The doubts were there right from the beginning beginning, when it was first announced that a multi-billion dollar mega corporation, responsible for destroying more small businesses than the fucking Great Depression, decided to buy up the rights to one of the most beloved and highly regarded fantasy novels in the entire history of literature. Well, at least the rights to the unfinished appendices of that story. Longtime fans, wary after seeing so many other once popular franchises bent over a table and subverted to such an extent that they needed reconstructive surgery and lifelong therapy sessions, greeted the used with the kind of enthusiasm that George R. R. Martin has for finishing Winds of Winter. Then came the first batch of images, the first casting announcements, and the first paid-for puff piece articles from the hollowed out shells of humanity masquerading as journalists. And all they really did was reinforce what everybody already suspected. This wasn't going to be a faithful retelling of a beloved story, because the story in question didn't fucking exist. Because all they really had was the rights to the unfinished appendices for the Silmarillion. And it definitely wasn't going to be an accurate representation of the world created by Tolkien, because that world is old-fashioned and problematic, and doesn't properly reflect the world we live in today. I mean, it's called fantasy for a reason, but that's okay, I'm sure the self-professed Tolkien scholars out there would be quick to point out how Tolkien himself was practically a blue-haired, anarcho-communist, feminist, progressive culture warrior behind closed doors. Sheer fucking hubris. Honestly, it makes me laugh that people unironically refer to themselves as Tolkien scholars. Seriously guys, it's a fucking book. Have you not got something better to devote your entire intellectual lives to? Jesus, the terrifying thing is that one day we're gonna have fucking Harry Potter scholars endlessly debating the hidden meaning behind J.K. Rowland's obsessive use of adverbs in place of actual descriptive writing. Seriously, once you notice it, you can never unsee it. Anyway, I digress. A teaser trailer was as inevitable as a new Star Wars show getting announced roughly every 10 minutes, and this is when things went from bad to thermonuclear. My personal highlight of that first trailer was watching Galadriel climbing the wall from Game of Thrones in full battle armour, using a fucking dagger as an ice axe. Honestly, all that was missing was the Tampax logo and some generically empowering statement like, FEEL THE MOMENT, or MAKE YOUR OWN RULES. The end result was that the first teaser got hammered worse than me at my local on a buy one get one free night, and from then on it was pretty much full scale war, with the might of Amazon and the mainstream media on one side, and the entire Lord of the Rings fanbase on the other. Things went from bad to worse when the studio invited a group of, uh, influencers? Is that the word I'm looking for? You know, just the kind of normal, everyday people that totally represent the Lord of the Rings fandom, to attend a big PR event in London and totally didn't bribe them to give their totally unscripted, unrehearsed and honest opinion of the first episodes. Yep, you could practically feel the authenticity radiating from the screen. The second teaser trailer made it extremely clear that if there was one thing we could look forward to in this show, it was Diversity, 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 and more diversity. Damn man, I've never rooted for a comet so much in my life. But hey, like taking out a third mortgage to refuel your car these days, filling out your tax returns, or burying that corpse that's slowly stinking up your house, there was only so long that Amazon could put off the release of a full-scale trailer. And here it is at last in all its... Uh... Glory. So does it allay everyone's fears, silence the critics, and reward the dozen or so people that have still got faith in this show? <laughs> If I had to sum this trailer up, I'd say that it reminds me of that old saying about politicians being the kind of people that can talk for hours without actually saying anything. There's a lot of big lavish landscape shots, showcasing what thousands of CGI artists working in sweatshop conditions can produce if they're suitably... motivated. And to be fair, they do look pretty good, which is what I'd expect from a show that costs more than Brazil's national debt, and it proves that you really can polish a turd if you throw enough money at it. It also leans very heavily into the Lord of the Rings musical cues, because let's be honest, we need something to hook existing fans in. But really, the bulk of the trailer is just incomprehensible nothingness. Just lots of fleeting glimpses of characters and places with no context or meaning behind them, and you can practically feel how desperate Amazon are to show you exciting stuff 
without really showing you anything substantial. The best I can really pull out of this is that it's trying to present the four main factions at play in Middle Earth and their various outlooks on the world at large. The story is set during the Second Age of Middle Earth, during a time of relative peace after the defeat of Morgoth, who basically made Sauron look like a little bitch in comparison. Most of the elves now believe that all is right with the world again, but not badass Galadriel, who's now a sword swinging, orc killing, fist fighting, hard drinking, all conquering strong female character. Because I guess the idea of having a female protagonist that can't fight and kill and punch just as hard as a man is to modern Hollywood what facts, logic and common sense are to a liberal arts professor. Then idiot McSquishy face Sorry, Elrond tells badass Galadriel that it's time to hang up her sword and stop being badass Galadriel because she's already defeated every enemy in the entire world. Because she's that damn good. But she's like, no way, I'm badass Galadriel. And he's like, I can be badass too. And she's like, I've seen more badass stuff than you have. Because it turns out that Galadriel was at ground zero for 9-11, and now she's got a bad feeling that something even worse is on the horizon. Place your bets on which character ends up being proven right, the strong female character who can do no wrong, or idiot McSquishy face. Take that, patriarchy. There's also this gentleman, who's apparently an elf too. <laughs> Yeah, sure, okay. I'm pretty sure that Tolkien explicitly described elves as fair-skinned, tall, slender, and possessing the kind of ageless ethereal beauty that no man could possibly rival. Which is what Peter Jackson did his best to replicate on screen in his own trilogy. But nah, who cares about sticking to things that were explicitly stated by the author of the book? Lore and world building are a bit like parole conditions, you see. Once you've breached them, there's no real incentive to hold back, so you might as well go all the way and enjoy it while it lasts. Then you've got the Hobbits. Sorry, Harfoots, because I'm sure they won't be visually and functionally identical to hobbits in this show. Anyway, they're represented mostly by Nori, a young woman that's curious to know more about the larger world while going against the nature of her people. There's not a whole lot I can say about them at this stage, although it is weird to see Lenny Henry in a supposedly serious role like this. American audiences have probably never heard of him, but over here in the UK, he's well known as a stand-up comedian. I'm sure there's some kind of hidden meaning in that. You've also got the dwarves represented by this awesome piece of photoshopping, and last of all, the men of Numenor, represented by Queen Mirio. Because, you know, of course they are. Despite the fact that leadership in Numenor could only ever pass to male heirs in the books, hence all the talk about the line of kings. But nah, whatever. We've got to meet that quota somehow, chaps. Remember, this is a totally made up fantasy world, which also somehow has to reflect the world that we live in today. Fucking hubris. I'm also willing to bet that she's going to charge into battle with a mixed army composed of at least 50% female soldiers. Because if women are known for anything, it's having the size, strength and physical endurance needed for medieval sword combats. Oh yeah, and then there's this little line right here, snuck in at the ends. The past is dead. We either move forward or we die with it. Hmm, whatever could the showrunners be trying to tell us here? Let the past die. Nah, it's a total mystery. Speaking of mysteries, what the fuck is this supposed to be? Did fucking Neil cartwheel his way onto set that day? You know, it always makes me laugh when directors are looking for some kind of memorable action scene and their answer is basically, what would happen if gravity wasn't a thing anymore? That being said, it does make for a banging techno remix. <laughs> Overall, assessing the contents of this trailer, it all adds up to the TV equivalent of a really big fireworks show. Something that's visually impressive and costs a lot of money, but doesn't seem to have a whole lot of substance behind it. And I can't shake the feeling that this show is going to have about as much in common with its source material as the new Resident Evil on Netflix. And don't worry, I'll be dealing with that steaming pile of dog shit soon enough. Believe that. But as far as the Rings of Power are concerned, this trailer basically proves that no amount of money can buy the one thing that Amazon so desperately wants, the loyalty of their fans. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.